Hey folks, this is Boosa Bob at Boosa Bob's Garage, and today we're going to be changing brake rotors and brake pads on a 1985 Toyota 4x4 pickup truck. And I just want to show you that I've already got one, one side done, and the process is a little bit involved because you have to remove the 4x4 hub to get the rotor off. And in this case, I've already changed brake pads as well. So let's get started. Okay, now with this vehicle, it's a little bit involved to get the brake rotors off because you have this 4x4 hub that um, basically the, the lockout mechanism for the four-wheel drive is inside here and there's a, a nut inside here as well that holds the entire uh, rotor assembly on there and then this hub has to come off of the rotor so the the uh, studs that hold the wheel on have to be uh, pressed out so um, next step is to remove the brake caliper so we'll get in there and do that and Basically, um, there's two bolts on the back side of this thing that, that hold the caliper on. They're, I'm not going to show it on the camera, but um, I'll, I'll show it removing. And the other thing, too, is you, you want to get a nice breaker bar on this thing because um, the the bolts are a little bit tight on there, so definitely want to use a breaker bar. And I'm going to try to show you as much as I can. Let's position the camera a little bit better here. Okay, that should do it. Okay, as a point of reference, I just wanted to show the new brake router, and as you can see, it doesn't have any of the studs in there, and as I was saying earlier, these studs have to be taken out and uh, put into the new router and hub. So, the next thing on the brakes is this clip has to come off of the... Uh, off of the line, the brake line, so the caliper can be moved out of the way. And basically you just have to get the right tool in there. And work that clip out of there. And now the line is free and the caliper can be removed and 
set off to the side. And your brake line is going to probably bend a little bit. This is a hard line here, and this is a soft line up on top. Okay, now <clears throat> these screws have to come out to get the cover off for the, the hub. And on the other side, um, whoever put them in last time stripped them out, and that's about the same case with these, but we'll see. It looks like I just got one of them. Okay, I'm going to have to use the same method that I used last time. And anytime you you have a seized bolt or a, a stripped bolt head, what I do is take a punch Okay, and it just turned. So I'm going to do that all the way around. And I'm going to replace these, these bolts. Okay, that one just turned. cap comes off and there is a gasket right here so you want to be careful not to uh, disturb that gasket because it's going to be reused so there's a ton of grease inside here and as you're going um, you want to get rid of some of this grease so you can get the next step of disassembly. Okay, there is a, a C-clip in here and you're definitely going to want one of these flat C-clip pliers to get this one off because it does not have holes like most C-clips. And this one is a little bit difficult to, to get off. The trick is just to get the side off like so. Just work the rest of it off. Okay, there it is. That can be cleaned up. Okay, there is a there's also a washer on here. And the other thing that has to be done is these these bolts have to be loosened up. What you want to do with these is get them out to the end of the threaded part of the stud. And I'll show you why in the next step. Okay, behind here there is some cone washers and they're they're pressed in 
and thanks to another video I saw an easy way to get these out but um, the cone washers have to be loosened from the hub so that the, the hub will come off of here. And the way to do that is get a drift punch and a hammer and tap on it and you will actually be able to loosen up the cone washer and here you can see the cone so each one of those has to be done like that And there's a lot of grease in here, so you probably want to clean that up and, and pack it with some new grease when you reassemble it. Um, the other thing to point out is there are some dowel pins on the hub that line up with these holes. So there's only two ways you can put it on. All right. Next step is to get the, uh, the four-wheel drive locking hub out of there. And I just give it a good hit with my hand on the socket wrench. Um, there's a little bit of torque on it, but not, not a lot. Okay, and then this is just a, a screw and a washer. And now the, the four-wheel drive engaging mechanism can come out. thing is there there's a bunch of grease in here and it's pretty messy so this has to be cleaned out Inside here, there's another kind of clip, and on the other side, I used this needle nose to remove this thing. Okay, that worked again. Um, but basically, this is—it's uh, holding the assembly in place. Um, there's some screws inside here that hold this hub inside there. So I'm just going to continue to clean this up as I go.
I guess the purpose of this thing is, is just to hold everything in there just in case the, the screws would come loose or something like that. So anyway, I'll set that off to the side. Very messy. You definitely want to have a lot of rags because there's a ton of grease inside here. Okay, next step um, there's three Torx screws on this hub. Once you've removed those screws, this outer piece should come out of here. Okay, and there is a, a key, there's a keyway in the threaded uh, outer shaft. So when you put that back together, uh, you're want, gonna obviously want to get the keyway lined up on that. as we go. Oh, also um, be careful, there, there is a gasket on here as well and you want to try to save that gasket. Okay, the next thing you can do, you can should be able to take uh, your needle nose, hopefully, okay, yeah, and uh, remove this nut, and this is actually what's holding the, the whole uh, rotor and hub assembly on there, and there's probably a certain amount of torque or possibly a procedure for tightening this nut when you put it back on, but uh, I checked the other one and there actually was a tiny bit of play on the rotor. When I put it back on, I, I just snugged it down and I didn't have any back and forth play on it. So you just want to snug it down because basically what it's doing is putting uh, pressure on the wheel bearing into the race so it probably does not have to be super tight okay, okay now the uh, the rotor should come off all right and as you can see we have the the wheel bearing. Okay, so next step is to get these two bolts 
out of there. Um, that's what's holding, part of what's holding the hub and the router together. And as you can see, there's, there's a bunch of grease on the spindle. Um, I'm just, when I put it back together, I'm gonna just pack a bunch of grease in there. Okay, back to it. Um, I'm gonna get out my trusty breaker bar with a 14 millimeter socket, and I'm gonna remove the two bolts from the hub and the router. that this truck is from California so um, we don't get a lot of uh, rust although uh, the vehicle is 30 years old so I don't know that these rotors have ever been changed as you can see there is a little bit of rust up on here as well. Okay, now for the fun part, the studs have to be removed. So what you want to do is get yourself, get one of the lug nuts put that on there just so that you can see the, the stud inside the top of the lug nut. And take your drift punch and your trusty hammer. And knock those studs out. stud just drops right out. all your studs. Put these aside to put back in the new rotor. Okay, the next challenge is <clears throat> getting the hub assembly off of the rotor. And you, depending on how bad yours is, it's rusted you may have to uh, put a pry bar in there or something to break that thing loose um, it also might help if you uh, spray some WD-40 or uh, PB blaster or something like that on there <clears throat> and let it soak for a little while but 
anyway, we'll clean this up a little bit. Looks like some hornets found a home in there at one time. And then the other thing is the wheel bearings are enclosed in the hub so this is one of the seals if you were really going to rebuild this thing uh, you probably want to take the wheel bearings out the the seal the wheel bearings get them all cleaned up repack them with grease um, in this case we're just going to lightly clean this thing and Put a bunch of grease back in there and it should be fine. Nothing is leaking really on this vehicle so I believe all the seals and, and the bearings are okay. Alright so here's our rotor and <clears throat> the reason I'm replacing these to begin with is uh, the person that I'm doing this for complained that the rotors were warped and I drove the vehicle and the uh, front end was shimmying when you apply the brakes and that's a, a good indication of warped rotors. Okay, there's the new rotor. So first thing we're going to do is got one thing that I did on the other one and you can just use some of the old grease and if you want to you can you can really clean this thing up and uh, do a good job on it but this is sufficient I'm going to put some grease on here so the next time if ever this thing is taken apart, um, it might not be so difficult to get the hub out of the rotor. Okay, and the other thing is you have to line up the holes so that um, the bolts can go on the back side and all of the studs can also be pressed back in there. You can rotate this thing a little bit. grease on the thread here. There's lock washers on there so it's okay to use a little bit of grease. That way they will not be so difficult to get off next time. And I'm just going to lightly snug these down at this time. Because the next step is I want to get my studs back in place. On the other ones, I put a little bit of grease on those as well, so prevent them from rusting, and again, makes it easier for the next guy to get them out. Could be me, you never know.
careful about these other studs here. I, I don't want to damage these, so um, what I'm going to do next, I, I'm just going to tap these things in lightly at the moment. all the way. <clears throat> and there is probably a torque setting for these. However, um, I'm just going to torque them down. Okay, for this next step, I'm going to have to reposition the camera, so be back in a second. Okay, what I've done here is put the hub and the rotor assembly down in the tire on the wheel so that I have a flat surface. And I'm going to uh, bring, bring the studs all the way home, so it's going to take a little work to do this. If you're worried about your rims, this might not be a great idea, but uh, I, I don't think any damage will be caused because it's on the back side of the rim. So. Okay, you can definitely tell when, when these things are home. Um, obviously, you want to be all the way up against the, the rotor with the head of the, the stud and make sure it's all the way in there because uh, that is what holds your wheel on. Okay. 
Okay, and we're ready to put the uh, put the rotor and hub back on the spindle. Actually, we put put a little bit of grease on there first. some grease in the inner bearing. You want to be a little careful putting this on because you're you're putting that uh, race past the seal. So you don't want to damage the seal when you're putting that on. Okay, next. Since there was a ton of grease on this thing, when I pulled it out, I'm going to put a ton of grease back in it. And I'm just using standard uh, high temp disc brake bearing grease. Okay, I believe the next step was the nut. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for my tool here. the uh, caliper that this thing is rubbing against. There you go. And again, um, as I said, on the other side, this thing had a little bit of play. But what I'm going to do is just snug this thing down by hand and basically there's zero play right now and the rotor is nice and tight I, I can't pull it back and forth but at the same time I'm not putting a lot of inward pressure on the bearings because uh, if you do that and the bearings would dry up for some reason it's going to uh, definitely take out the bearing in the race Okay, next part. Putting this hub back on, and again, this has a keyway, and that slides on top of the keyway. And the reason that there's so many holes in there is that three of these holes will line up with the holes on the nut. So depending on what position the nut is in, you basically have to, have to find those holes. And it may be necessary to 
um, move that nut slightly. to be able to line up with the holes. So we'll see what happens here. And the other thing is it, it helps to get the grease out of there so you can actually see where the holes are that are, are going to line up. Thing you can do is just kind of probe around on there and, and see where the, the alignment hole is. Okay, it looks like I got one of them there. So I did have to move the nut just ever so slightly. However, that uh, should not really affect anything. In fact, I had to move it in the, in the tightening direction slightly. Okay, there's two. And third one. So just keep cleaning, cleaning everything, clean the grease, clean the tools. Okay. And those just get snug. Well, I shouldn't say snug. You, you have to put some torque on them, but I'm just hand tightening them with a, with a hand screwdriver because it, don't, it is only a small torque. Okay, next part is a bit of a trick as well. You have to get this uh, C-ring or clip or whatever it is back in there. I got it in by hand. Just make sure that's flush with the inside of this hub. Okay, now Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of a break here. Okay, we want to continue getting this hub back together. And in the last step, I, I put the, C cl or the uh, clip back in. And here we want to put the hub locking mechanism in. And the uh, thing is, this thing only goes in one way. Um, and it actually, uh, there's some fingers or something in here, some slots that go around the ends of that clip. So that clip does kind of serve a purpose in there to keep this thing oriented. Okay. And next thing is you want to put the, the holding clamp back in there. And there's 
still grease all over the place. Okay, and as you can see, as I'm turning this thing, the hub is actually uh, moving in and out. So, uh, depending where the lever is for the four-wheel drive mechanism, um, I guess this thing comes out and engages and disengages. And right now, when I'm rotating it, the, uh, the four-wheel drive, the transaxle is turning. So I'm going to give this a little bit of torque on here to make sure everything holds on there. Um, now I can rotate it back the other way and you can see that the, the locking mechanism went back in and that is that's the position you're going to want it in when you put this thing back together. Uh, right now the vehicle is in two-wheel drive so you want it to be disengaged now here you can see the slot that the the c-ring goes into and i'm just going to throw a little grease back on this thing i didn't really remove any of the old grease but uh, well I did take a little bit off that's why I put some more back on okay next I'm gonna put this hub back on and again, there are some dowels that have to be lined up. Okay. And here we can put a couple of the cone washers back in. Along with lock washers and the nuts. just going to put two in for now. Just snug those down. Okay, here's our gasket. Okay, next thing, make sure you put your washer back on here. Okay, for this part, we're going to continue. I've got my washer on the end of the spindle here, and there's the groove on the spindle that the uh, the C-clip has to go on. So you want to make sure you get the right orientation on the C-clip. The flattest side is, is going to go towards the outside. So I, I've actually had my assistant here holding a screwdriver in the slot and pressing out on it because this the spindle <clears throat> is kind of moving in and out so when I push the C-clip on it wants to move in so I'm gonna have to try to hold this thing and push it on at the same time and this is a little tricky it actually flew off and hit me last time Okay, I've got
Okay, there it goes. And you just you have to make sure that it goes all the way in the slot. You'll you'll actually see it, and now you should be able to rotate it, and it'll stay in the slot. Okay. Uh, as you can see, that was a little bit difficult to get that on there. Again, you want to make sure that the nut inside is tight. Actually, we're, we're going to leave that. I, I tightened that already. And the, uh, the four-wheel drive is disengaged. And right now I'm rotating the rotor freely and the transaxle or the front differential is not turning. The drive shaft is not turning. So that's how I know it's not disengaged or it's not engaged. Okay, now we can put our cone washers back on all the way around. And then what I did last time, I put a, a pry bar in between the, the thread um, on the, for the lug nut and the hub to keep this secure while I'm torquing down the, uh, the nuts on the outer hub. And you want to do this in a, in a rotating pattern just like you do when you tighten up a uh, the lug nuts on your wheel. Again, I, I don't know what the torque is on these, but I'm just going to use a 3 8 drive and apply even torque on all of these. I would guess it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of about, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 foot pounds or something like that. I would advise uh, getting the torque specification for those so that they're torqued properly. Okay, remove your breaker bar. Okay, now the last step that I'm going to do before uh, changing the brakes, I'm going to clean up this rotor. Actually, to avoid getting any more grease around. I'm going to put the outer uh, cover on there just with two bolts. Again, I, I have to replace those bolts because the, uh, the Allen head was stripped out.
So that's pretty much it for the, <clears throat> the router change. And next we're going to move on to changing the brake pads. Just clean this up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to take a little break and we'll come back and uh, change the brake pads.